we're going to look at five properties. Consider the integral from lower limit a to upper limit a um, from f of x to the x-axis, wherever f of x is. It might be above the x-axis, it might be below, I don't know. Okay. If you have a beginning a and an ending a, if you're guessing what's the value of this integral, it has some value tied to it. Okay. If you guessed zero, you're absolutely right. When the limits are the same, the value of the integral is zero. So whenever you're studying an integral, a definite integral, it's probably pretty important to pay attention to the limits because the answer might be as easy as zero. Okay, I just want you to notice the limits here. We usually start with A at the bottom and B at the top. A usually represents the smaller X value and B is the larger X value. All right, so what effect on the answer would I have if I put the bigger X first and the smaller X last? Well, instead of working from left to right and accumulating the area, if you will, we're working from right to left. So if you had to guess what effect that has, well, it's actually going to be the opposite of what you would have got had you integrated or collected or accumulated the area from left to right. So it may become necessary for us to switch limits, and if we do switch limits, it's important to note that we're going to find the opposite of the answer, and that will come up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just give you this next property right here. Um, if you are asked to consider uh, an integral from a to b of f of x, let me get a visual over here. Let's just say we have this function. Here's a and here's b. Maybe. Okay, so we're interested in this region right here. Okay, well, what I could do, it might become necessary, is I could determine any C value between A and B. I could maybe say, well, here's C. Consider the line X equals C. Okay, I can break this apart, if you will. I can say, you know what? Let's just integrate from A to C, collect that area of the function, F of X. And then I can collect this area by itself right here. So this integral would start with a lower limit of C and end at an upper limit of B. Same function. I could divide this up into many sections, but go back and add them together, and it would still give me the same value as that integral. And we'll work with that property, too. Let's look at number four. Consider the integral from A to B. Consider k to be a constant multiplier times some function. All right. If we wanted to make this work easier, simpler, make the numbers smaller or better, okay, if k is a constant multiplier, there is a property that allows us to factor out, if you will, pull out, divide out, bring out of the integrand the k, if it's a constant multiplier. I can never bring out a variable because there's some, some calculations that I have to do with that variable. I can't ever bring out a variable from an integrand, but I can bring out a constant multiplier. But don't confuse that with if I were adding a constant, okay? I wouldn't bring out the constant if I'm adding or subtracting, only when it's a multiplier on the integrand. So that's our fourth property. Our fifth property. Okay, I'm going to give you our fifth property, even though we've already actually been using it. Um, it'll make sense to you.
Consider the integrand that is a sum or a difference of two expressions. Sometimes it's going to be helpful to break apart. If I'm adding or subtracting, it might be easier to work individually um, with each of the uh, functions. So um, the integral of a sum is actually the sum of an integral. So both f and g would get the same limits here. So sometimes it's helpful to break it apart um, in our work with integrals. Okay, so next time we meet, we'll get to practice these properties and get to practice what we did on the worksheet as well, looking at a limit of a Riemann sum.